Getting started in Meshtastic has improved a lot over this recent year. When I first was introduced to Meshtastic, it was a lot of you know bare PCB boards or you had to solder a screen on, or it was just a very simple board that you had to add an antenna or some kind of a case, likely 3D printed. It made it a bit restrictive to people who wanted to get started in Meshtastic relatively affordably. That has changed. A number of devices now exist on the market for more higher price, right, because they're doing all the work to encase it and add all the capabilities of battery, usually an antenna, an antenna mount in some cases. But I found one that I think is a really good option, affordably priced, and gives you very high performance as well as all the other little features you'd want for a turnkey solution for Mesh-tastic. This is the Muzzy Works R1, and no, those aren't vapes behind me. Uh, that's the single unit with the little nubbin antenna, and then they have the external antenna model that, yeah, comes with the antenna. These run off the WizBlock systems from Rack Wireless. At least it has the baseband board and then the LoRa module on top of it, and it also has a battery on all of this in this little tiny little platform. Rack wireless devices, the WizBlock system is fantastic for LoRa because they are very conservative on their battery usage. Meaning these can go for days in standby mode or just doing mesh tasticy things. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to set this up to get the peak efficiency out of it to run it as long as possible. But I kind of also want to open this up and see what's actually inside of it. I'm very intrigued how they managed to make this so small and yet still run all of the baseband and LoRa board with a battery inside. So let's go take a look. All right, so I have my little muzzies here and I did a factory reset on this one. And this is my first how-to recommendation. If you end up factory resetting your Meshtastic devices, which you might do from time to time. It, I, I've done it quite often actually. If I forget what's going on with it or whatever and I just wanna fresh start, I'll do a refresh of this, or sometimes I will do a firmware upgrade by taking it to the Meshtastic web launcher or web flashing tool, and it will go ahead and do all factory reset on this thing, a full erase, which is what I often do. And then the phone and this will no longer want to talk to each other. So the way you get around that is I know that this is the Meshtastic 365F, and so your phone is already Bluetooth, or at least it thinks it knows the Bluetooth for this device, and if you bring another device with the same name to your phone, they won't connect because you already have tethered it at some point. So always make sure you go find that unit and then forget device. That's going to be the first thing you're going to need to do in a lot of these situations. So with that out of the way, my phone should now pair. If I go back to Meshtastic, so let's do that we see 365. I just turned this guy on and he's waiting for me. So if I click on him, it should say connecting with device and then it'll ask you to pair it. And to do the pairing, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That is the code. And you'll find that in a lot of these units, you will have the same pairing code, particularly if they are WizBlock devices or rack wireless devices. First thing you're gonna see is set a region. So set it to your region, okay? That makes sense. It's gonna bring up LoRa config, go to region, select United States if you're in the United States. And at this point, I'm just gonna let it restart. So I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna go through a process of restarting and then we can do the remainder of the setup. Now give it a second here because you're gonna see no device connected even though he's right there. Don't worry, he'll connect in a second and you'll come right back to it. And there you go, it's now connecting. And it says Laura, set Laura region. Nope, it's fine, just like I said. G give it a second to get set up. So the only thing they recommend you do is you go back into settings so mainline settings here, and you're gonna to go to device, and then you're gonna look for GPIO. Where's GPIO? There it is, buzzer. Make sure it is set to 31. If it's not, set it to 31, and that's all you have to do. Let's go back up to the top here. Now, I'm gonna show you this. This is an optional setting, but it's an important one. The devices will be client in its primary mode and function. A client is like a device you carry around with you. For most situations, for most of you, client as is is completely fine. But as we learn more about having a lot of these devices in and around communities where lots of people have come together, you sometimes don't want to use just client. And what you should do is client mute. The device does not forward packets from other devices. So that brings back the potential need of a second unit or someone else running a client mode at a high vantage point. So 
a hotel room very high up, maybe on the balcony, set this guy up as a standard client, and then use this guy in client mute. And if everybody uses client mute, then everybody will be able to beacon, but they won't be cross-talking each other trying to beacon each other's packets as they come out. And that's what happens when you get a hundred of these in the same room and this guy is beaconing this guy's beacon and this guy is beaconing this guy's beacons, then you flood the entire network relatively quickly. So when impossible, you can use client mute and that might help things out. This is really only going to be important if you go to things like Burning Man or Coachella or Hamvention, Hamcation, or even heck, Pacificon, which is where we leverage this to great effect to be able to communicate almost like a just completely available party line at all times. It was fantastic. So, all right, we're going to leave client like that. I'm going to go back to settings. I'm going to go to user. Now, you have a short name and a long name, and I almost always just use HRCC for all my devices. And then up at the long name, I'll clear this guy out. I often will get rid of the ID as well. And then I'll use something like HRCC. And then something that tells me what the unit is. So this is the Muzzy. Oop, if you spell it right, it works even better. Muzzy or Musy. Is it Musy? Musy or Muzzy? Musy. <laughs> Sorry, Musy. Go ahead and set that and then hit save. And it may want to reset or not. You can tell by going to the Bluetooth connection and it might drop out on you. And it did, you see that, it lost connection. But now he's back and he's gonna reconnect. Now for those wondering, these go for about $80 each. Now for some of you that have no concept of Meshtastic or this truly would be your first Meshtastic device, you might be thinking, well Josh, there's no screen on this. What am I supposed to do uh, to use this device? And really, there's really only one button you ever really mess with, it's this little oval button on the base of the of the unit here, that turns it on, and if you hold it down, it turns it off. There's also a reset button and a USB-C port, because all devices should be USB-C. But no, you're gonna connect this to your phone, either Android or iOS or, or iPad, it doesn't really matter, and you're going to connect and use that as the screen. Trust me when I say it's a lot more effective to use one of these little dongles and a phone or device to give it the location that it needs for, say, GPS and whatnot, because it takes it through the phone, then to have kind of all in one unit with a lot of complexity, weight to go along with it when you could just use this tiny little whiz block with a very efficient device inside to do LoRa Meshtastic and get on the air that way. Now, if you get into the world of communicating with these, which is the idea, the point of all this, you're gonna click the messages button down here at the bottom, go to your primary channel and just type in, I don't know, test. If you've got another unit around to test it, let's see what happens. And we got the test there. So great, all working. Now, to go a little bit further with that, let's create a secondary channel. And so you may want encrypted channels to go along with this. And yeah, it, it does do encrypted. So keep in mind that when there are channel options, always leave your primary channel alone, particularly if you're just gonna run a standard client that rebroadcasts packets. You want it to be able to do that and primary channel is how you do it. But if you want a secure channel, click on add and then name it what you want. It could be uh, HRCC secure. And then go ahead and set this to 256 bit if you want, 128 is okay too. And then you can cycle through a number of keys. Then when you're done with that, let's see, position requests, sure, why not? Precise location, sure, why not? It's encrypted. And then I'll leave MQTT off. I traditionally leave this off. There are other videos to explain this and a wealth of online tool tips you can go to if you'd like to learn more about MQTT, but I generally don't do it. And then hit save. Now, it'll give it a second. Let's go back out here, channels. Let's see if it got it. And there's HRCC secure. So if I go back to settings, we know it's there, and we go to share QR code. If you hold this up and you have a friend who has a Meshtastic device tethered to a phone, the Meshtastic app will sync up with this QR code if they just point their camera at it. So it's not the Meshtastic app. Remember, you just take your phone in camera mode and QR code it, and it will use then jump to Meshtastic and it will set the channels that you want on the device. If you don't want to give them a secure channel, well, just uncheck it and it will only give them primary or vice versa. You can make a whole bunch of channels and you can swap them out very easily, very, very easy. This is actually one of the best features of this to get a number of these working at any time. And people have asked me, well, Josh, how do you get one to understand the other vice versa? Or like if you own a lot of these devices? Well, 
send this image to a computer and then turn on and turn off these devices, make a tether connection to your phone, and then take a picture of it and it'll sync the channels over. And that's pretty much all you have to do, which is pretty simple. Anyway, at that point, you'll then be able to start pulling up Mesh-tastic devices as they come and appear on the node, and you'll be able to intercommunicate between each other. It's that simple. That's really all there is to it. Now, it's still just based off of texting. So you're just saying hi in text. You may send nominal information like your location, like we just said. And in some cases, there are some sensor data that you can pick up for like weather stations and some other stuff as well. Oh, look. Hi. Made it. Anyway. Stop it. There we go. So yeah, that is in its essence what Meshtastic does. You have now done it and you are doing it. Uh, you can make this as complicated as you want by having solar panel devices that you can set up on your roof with nicer antennas, or you can have little baby units like these that you scatter around and increase your mesh, or just encourage other people to get their own Mesh-tastic devices and flesh out the network that way. Now, I will mention MuzzyWorks also does sell a Helltech V3, and a lot of you are like, Josh, what gives? You've been talking about Helltechs for a really long time. Well, yeah, they're about $26 with no battery, no GPS, just the bare board, and you have to provide a case. So not really the turnkey option. And yeah, it does have a screen, which is really nice if you're that inclined to have that kind of information on you. For me, though, I seldom look at the screens, even though, yeah, I have a number of Helltechs. And once you get it all built up with a battery, a case, and all that stuff, you're running about the $75 that they're asking for once you add an antenna and all that other stuff. For me personally, I'd rather go for smaller, lighter, and much longer running because unfortunately the Heltex, they're kind of a battery hog, especially when you compare it to the rack wireless devices. So if you're ever doubting which way to go in Meshtastic and you can get yourself a rack wireless based device, you're likely gonna be a lot happier, particularly if it's something you wanna run for a very long time without having to drag around a big bulky battery to go along with it. The Muzzy Works R1 comes in a myriad of colors. There's four, gray is pretty nice, although I really do like the red. I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I guess it's because it's kind of a dark burnt orange color that I really, really like it. And this is the one that has gone with me to a number of ham fests as well as uh, this little guy as well. And so what I end up doing is I'll turn this one on in the hotel room to just help in retransmitting if I want, if I'm so inclined. And then this is the one that stays on me and I can clip it to my, my chest rig, kind of matches the blue of my chest rig bag that I carry around in a lot of the ham fests. And they just kind of work in tandem together to help propagate signals if you need to do that. Although at a lot of ham fests, you don't really need to do that for reasons I probably already mentioned. Again, USB-C on the bottom with a hanging kind of system at the top here. I'll just leave this hanging on something in the hotel room, plug USB-C in the side of it, and it works just fine. But I am beside myself with interest and I must open this device. Before I do that though, I'll show you around the bottom here. There is a message indicator light. There is a on off light, which you'll see this blinking most often. This is the recessed reset button, which resets the unit, which uh, this is off, so I'm not gonna push it. And there's your on off button as well as a little speaker hole. And of course that wonderful, wonderful USB-C. But there are two Phillips head screws here that we are going to remove and maybe get access to the inner workings of the Musi. All right, let's, oh yeah, just comes right off. So. There's a single piece button holder there. So let's go ahead and leave that. And then, ooh, hey, look at this. This is pretty slick. So they have the button press there to turn it on. There's your reset button. And they've got a little 3D printed thing there to hold it. I have, will this wiggle out? Can I unplug the battery? Okay. I've rendered it inert so it won't start. Oh yeah, okay. And there's the battery. There's a little divider on the inside. Oh, it's a little, hey, that's pretty slick. There's a little board there to protect the inner working of the Rack Wireless 4630 on the inside. And uh, there's a little kind of a uh, little notch for this to ride in. And yeah, so it slides right back in very nicely. That's pretty slick. And what do we got here? We got a 1800 milliamp hour battery from Muzi Works or Muzzy Works. Hopefully one of those is correct and nobody's screaming in the comments right now. So let's, let's see if we can slide this back in as easily as we got it out. 
I'm going to, maybe I can insert the battery without having to take the whole thing. No, it's, see, it's, it can sit a little bit. So let's, let's go ahead and slide out the rack board. Well, wow, that was really easy to take apart. I, <laughs> I expected it to be way more difficult than that. So we're about, uh, I don't want to pinch anything. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. Let me, let me restart this. And we'll seat this guy home. Route the, oh, I turned it on. Is that enough? Did I do enough there? I'm gonna guess no. Well, it looks so easy going in. It looks so easy come, going out, so uh, I've got something wrong here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of manual adjustment, and it seats it right back in. So I did have to give it a little push, a little nudge, but uh, once it got lined up, it was, uh, that was real easy. So it went right back into place. Let's seat this guy up. Make sure our buttons are in place there. And you got a serrated washer, compression washer, and then a nut. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the, uh, I'm gonna screw down this antenna for a second and I'm gonna turn this on just to make sure it'll come on. And yeah, it came right back on. Okay, cool. Now tightening this down uh, looked to be quite difficult. So I'm just gonna do my best to use my plier as a force multiplier <laughs> and probably scratch up the case real bad. Here we go. And there we go, attaching our muzzy. Muzzy, muzzy. So my simple review here is they work fantastic. I usually have this gray one, it kind of matches the interior of my truck. On the dashboard of my truck driving around, I'm able to pull in signals, I'm able to transmit here in Southern California without any issue. And they work great on travel too, because depending on where I'm at, there's usually one or two mesh-tastic nodes in the area. And hopefully if it's a ham fest, there's a lot more. I hope you found this useful informative links are in the description and a big thank you to muzzy works for sending me a couple of our ones to take a look at highly recommended it is now based on size alone and the inconspicuous nature my favorite turnkey recommendation for mesh tastic and if that's you take a look at the link in the video description i'm josh ki6 naz thanks so much for watching 73 but I found one that I think is a combination of everything you need to get started, completely turnkey, and my phone is going on.